K-I-L-R Taylor Games Simmers and pilots, I am the Killer Gamer, and welcome back to the tour around the world featuring Shadow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> featuring Fly 2 by Terminal Reality. Are you gonna go flying with me? Huh? Yeah, so we're following the same flight plan you're shedding, boy. As we are on the other flight simulators. And this time around, we'll talk about uh, where it is that we're going here. Okay, so here we are at Kankakee. And we're going to be flying, uh, let's see, yeah, down here. Uh, this is Bloomington Normal. Our flight plan should take us to Pontiac, which is right here. And down to Bloomington Normal, which is down here. Uh, it'd be nice if I could scroll this map, but I don't know of any way to do it. You can't right-click it. Um, you can't click and drag either. So, can't use the arrow keys. Can't use the space bar. <laughs> it just doesn't work. Uh, uh, be kind of nice. Um, and this is only a sectional map. It's not going to show us the whole thing uh, anyway after this. Interesting enough, it doesn't seem like the flight plan that I created is showing up here. Um, but that's that's okay. We don't necessarily have to use uh, ATC or anything. Uh, but, let's see. We're going to be flying the Pontiac. And then... Uh, uh, blooming to normal, which is... This is it down here. You can't can't really see it very well, but it says BMI. But Pontiac 109.60. Um, we can click on this or double click on it. And we can say, hey, tune that in. And that'll tune us uh, in on nav one. And as far as Kankakee, we can take a look and see what we have here. Um and we'll see if we, uh, if we can get it to work. We got three different flight stations. Um, let's try Ada's first. Well, I think we have to get power into the plane. Yeah, let's go ahead and close this off. We don't need that. Interesting. This doesn't seem to be working here. We'll tune it in manually then. One 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 point six, right? Huh, we can't we can't tune it in, no wonder. How are we supposed to tune in one 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 point six? <laughs> It's kind of silly. It's like, here's the ATIS, but you can't tune into it. But we can tune into FSS. We can open up our IFR flight plan. IKK Radio 505 Sierra Papa, would you open my IFR flight plan at this time? 505 Sierra Papa IKK Radio, we have you off at 0130. And we'll open your flight plan at this time. Okay, so that is open. Um, we can go to Multicom here. And on the uh, alternate here, we'll just go ahead and tune in Approach Departure 
and we'll make use of that here in a little bit. And I think we can tune this off. So let's go ahead and we'll we'll take the runway here. Five, Sierra, Papa, taking the runway. Which runway are we going to take? Not quite sure. Look at this, one 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 point six. That's the nav, right? I hope that's the nav radio, and that's not the. Uh... <laughs> that wasn't. Uh... Now let's just make sure. Let's close this up here. Go to Windows, go to Vector. There's our flight plan. Yeah, as soon as we turned it on, everything came on. Yeah, 109.6, okay. Okay, this didn't pop up yet. I was hoping it would. We'll go and flick on our lights here. Not that we can really see anything, but... Alright, what direction do we need to go? We need to go west. We'll take this runway right here. And it seems kind of dark, so I went ahead and just... put my phone here in front of me with a light. <laughs> It'll probably die of power. Of course, it's a little hard to see. because it's shining me in the face. And maybe I should put it over here on the side. There we go. That's not too bad. Now I don't look like I'm in the dark. Yeah, but then again, you know, for realism purposes, we are flying at night. Should I get like a red filter or something? Have like a red... Oh, the parking brake's on. <laughs> no wonder we're barely moving. just come over here and turn around here. Alright, so we're on runway. Alright, we're on our way. I guess we won't be using this because we're not uh, requesting an approach for landing. There we go. 
finally. We gotta click and hold in order to change this thing. It slowly gets faster. Okay, that's our heading. I don't think we're going to get any flight following or anything on this one. Let's see here. There is an airport over here. At approach, departure. Yep. Nothing we can do there. That's all right. We can have a nice, quiet flight. We seem to be moving here too. I'm gonna fix our um, heading bug here. It is a little slow to turn. We got the autopilot on. We got heading on. Let's make some adjustments here to our heading. Yeah, see, now this is trying to tell us that we're going from Joliet, which is kind of weird because that's not where we're going. Altitude button. Well, that doesn't really do anything, does it? There we go, that's what we want, Pontiac. I think we got it. 29, 20, okay, yeah, that's it. Kind of weird that this does not have a DME anywhere, but this is the only thing that we got for distance measuring. Yeah, so I've been doing I've been doing a lot of work on uh, flight simulation videos uh, lately. I've got a new series that I'm working on. Uh, it's not yet ready to premiere, and I'm hoping it's going to be um, I'm hoping it's going to be 
well received because I really I don't see anyone else doing it it is going to be a flight sim video or series um, that's pretty much all I'm going to say for the moment uh, I am going to be taking uh, a lot of the things that have worked in previous flight simulation videos that I've that I've done and kind of put this together and and hopefully it it goes goes over well um, I'm still doing my collecting on uh, software uh, for example, this right here, it's hard to read. Um, I don't have the box. This is a very, very rare, um, a rare find. But this is for Flight Simulator 98, and it's called the Triangle by Lago. And it's supposed to give you some scenery for... Uh, the Florida area, as well as the Bermuda Triangle, and there's also like weird things that happen there, like like UFOs show up or something. So uh, I've been wanting to, to get this and, and and check it out. And now that now I have it, I'm still looking for a boxed copy. So to get a box copy, that'll be great. I got some other stuff uh, that I'm still waiting, uh, like I paid for it, and I'm waiting for it to be shipped, and pretty much all that I'm, you know, hearing at the moment is, well, we're not allowed to ship to the United States just yet. Like, others are, why can't you? I don't know. This whole pandemic thing is just stupid beyond stupid at this point. What does this button do? Oh, that's my enunciator switch. Which doesn't really do anything. <laughs> oh, hey. Nav GPS slave. GPS approach. Interesting. At least I found that. show you my boxed copy of Fly. I thought I had... Oh, I think it's sitting over here. Nope. That is not it. <laughs> that is... Is it underneath all this stuff? Man, I need to do something with that. Nope. 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 I must have it up there somewhere. Here are some other things that I'm looking forward to checking out. I had gotten this. This is Global. It is a scenery upgrade. It's supposed to replace like all the uh, textures and I think adds like vores and uh, NDBs and stuff. I don't know if it adds any airports, um, but this is for Flight Simulator um, preferred Flight Simulator 98, but it also works on Flight Simulator 95 as well as uh, uh, 5.1. And if this adds like a lot of nav aids and stuff, this is going to be fantastic for 5.1. But it's supposed to be, it's supposed to update uh, textures and stuff too. So, 
not quite sure how how this is going to look. It comes on two CD-ROMs. Quite curious about it. Yeah, we're going up in uh, altitude here. too much to see. It's funny, um, this reflection here almost seems like uh, the light from my phone is reflecting off of that, but as you can see, this is a recording. Um, so it's not like a recording of my like actual screen. I mean, you're getting a direct recording, so a light from my camera wouldn't make any sense, but <laughs> still... like how this way there's like no lights or anything here that works. Can you scroll? Huh. I've got this set up for like precipitation or rain and it doesn't seem to be doing that. <laughs> I was hoping to get some weather variety in here. This clock looks 280E. Not sure I understand that. doesn't really do anything. You know, something else I've been doing a lot of uh, lately is flying airliners. Um, I've been doing a lot of airline flying uh, with the classic simulators as well as uh, P3D. And I did do um, a couple with um, X-Plane. And doing a lot of that sim flying, um, I got back into that sim after, oh man, when was I last in there? Like 2005, six. I don't know, it's been almost like 15 years uh, since I played on it. Like 12, 15 years. And I've been playing, I've been playing on that sim like way more now than I ever did before. So trying to get, you know, I'm looking through their events and trying to get involved in a lot of events that they've got. One thing that helps is I'm able to work from home. Um, and I have a flexible schedule, so it allows me to kind of flex my schedule around. Um, I can also take some time off, which I've done. Uh, which will allow me to uh, take part of a lot of these flights. There seems to be a lot more events going on and, and outside of the United States, like uh, stuff in Asia and Africa and the Middle East and there seems to be more stuff going on uh, with those 
and I think it's really cool to be able to go and, and fly in those areas and actually hear people um, from those areas, uh, pilots and controllers. It's, it's really neat. It's a very immersive experience. And it can be a little uh, nerve-wracking a little bit because you're talking with real people. Um, but after you start doing it uh, for a bit, it start to start to warm up to it. You start to feel a little bit more comfortable. I'm by no means perfect, that's for sure. Um, sometimes I'll I have to like ask a controller to repeat something like two, three times or something because it's hard for me to understand understand them. Or they say things and like I hear it and then by the time I'm ready to write it down I forgot it. There's an airport right over here. That looks like Pontiac Airport. Got a little bit of a glow right here. So that's probably the city of Pontiac. Yeah, it's not overly impressive at night. Um, I do like how the airports, the runways are kind of lit up. That is kind of kind of neat. cloud cover up here. And there is some air traffic out there, as you can see. They never seem to be anywhere where we're, at, where we're at, though, I've noticed. Hey, look, Peoria. We will be going here in the future. Um, but right at the moment, we're going here. The Pontiac. Hey, where's the rest of it? It's kind of odd. All right, so 108.2. <laughs> That's kind of weird. <laughs> 108.2. We'll go ahead and just tune that in. Oops. 108. There's got to be a, a quicker way to to change this OBS here. Okay, we need to turn to a heading of about 21. I don't know if we have any ILSs or anything here. Let's see here. Oh, look at that. One runway is closed. Interesting. I wasn't paying attention. I didn't have the uh, right. Radio hooked up. Wait a minute, or did I? Well, eight point 
too. Okay. This doesn't seem to be working the greatest. <laughs> it was 108.2. I was pretty sure of it. Alright, well, let's go back to this then. Oh, we got the localizers here. We got runway 29 and runway 20. This is helpful. Well, we can use runway 20. Let's use that one. I'm just got to change this here to 20. See if we can get a hold of approach here. DFI approach five zero five Sierra Papa request approach for landing five zero five Sierra Papa DMI approach cleared for approach runway two zero turn right heading two eight five two eight five. Does he want us to go to 285? That doesn't make much sense. Oh, 3247. Uh, approach. Radar contact. I have no idea what to do here now. <laughs> no message. Apartment or uh, airport. See, I can't even click on it. Oh, I can click on it here, though. There we go. Oh, my. I just messed this thing up.
Okay, so how do I click enter on this? Well, it's going to tell us 22 miles. Really? We're 22 miles from it? I didn't think we were that far. It didn't seem like we're that far. Point two. Oh, look. Have our um, ILS thing going here. So I'm adjusting our course a little bit. See if we can't capture this, uh, the uh, 20 vector here. Kind of curious if the, uh, the approach uh, mode here on the autopilot actually works. chills. Of course, I've got my fan on over there, but... Oh, it gets kind of stuffy in here with all you know, the computers and stuff. So I'm like trying to decide here if I want to fix my i7 computer or build an i9 computer. And then there's always that AMD thread ripper. But I don't know, I've been kind of looking up stuff. And it seems like the I9 still performs better on a flight simulation than what the AMD does. Not really sure. Uh, 
pop up the um, uh, approach. Turn left, heading two four zero. Two four zero. Well, we're getting close here. Oh, it's moving. See if we can try that approach now. Whoa. Is it working or no? I think I might be log locked into it now. Yeah, it looks like we might actually be locked into the localizer now. Jeez. I didn't know where this plane was going at first. I wonder if it captures the glide slope or not, or if we have to do that manually. Well, we're about ready to capture the glide slope here, so... Start dropping some flaps here. And there was a light up ahead. Yep, right there. There's the airport.
Looks like a shiny little light up here in front of us. There was, there it is. Yeah, so it doesn't lock in on the glide slope. We've got to kind of do that ourselves here. A little bit old school, I suppose. see red lights over there that's one thing I like about flight 2 are these pinkish lights here they look actually they look kind of cool oh, we are locked into the ILS but it sure looks like we're off to the side though doesn't it Oh, but then again, yeah, I'm not thinking here. Probably need to turn it over. Yeah, we're locked into it, but we're off to the side. We're good though. I think we can go ahead and turn that off. We'll get ourselves lined up.
Taxi to terminal here. BMI ground 505 Sierra 505 Sierra Papa BMI ground contact tower at 124.60. Why I was asked to require uh, clearance for the terminal and it sent me to tower instead, so you know, who knows? That's okay. We'll just park right over here. Our favorite little spot. Right over here in the grass, at the corner of a couple of runways. It's our thing. Yeah, just park it right there. I'm not sure where the parking brakes are at. <laughs> I can never seem to find them. Ooh. Ooh, we have... Oh. Ooh. <laughs> we can brighten the panel up here. I didn't, I didn't know what that was for. Okay, well. It's good to know. Alright, so we'll just go ahead and turn everything off here. And welcome to Bloomington Normal, uh, Central Central Illinois Regional. Is that what it is? <laughs> let's let's take take a look at that again. Uh, here we go. Uh, that is that's the Vor. I thought we didn't we take all this stuff off here. I thought we did. So. Central Illinois Regional. That's it. Close that there. But yeah. So, welcome. And thank you uh, for watching. I hope you're enjoying uh, this series. We have a lot of flights ahead of us. And if you are enjoying this, consider leaving a thumbs up and a like. And put some comments. Um... Let me know, did you fly this back in the day? Um, do you think you might fly it? Uh, I am flying this on Windows 10, so it does work on Windows 10. Uh, I would recommend it on Windows 10. Uh, don't try it on Windows 7. If you've seen the earlier episodes, you'll know that I've had some graphical problems trying to play it on 7. Heck, I even tried playing it on in VMware and had some trouble. Um, yeah, so Windows 10 works beautifully. don't have any problems with the graphics or anything. So that's why I like having a dual boot system. <laughs> Comes in handy, really does. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you're new here, go ahead and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. That way you'll get notified of future flight simulation content. Because I have a whole bunch on this channel. As well as other types of content. So, my upload stuff all the time but you may not know what it is so subscribing will let you know what's what's been uploaded 
And then if you are if you're into the live streaming uh, scene and like to see me do some live streams, um, I do have a Twitch channel. It's twitch.tv slash killergamer. Um, I do a lot of flight simulation there, but um, I will also go on and do some other types of games. Uh, just depends upon what it is that I'm working on. Some of these episodes I actually stream while I'm recording. Not this particular one, but other ones um, I'll stream as I'm recording. And if you're with me, you get to be part of the show. That's kind of a cool thing. And then if you uh, want to delve deeper into the whole uh, killer tele television phenomena. <laughs> phenomena. Bum, bum, ba -da, ba -da. I know that's a different name. But anyway, <laughs> uh, if you'd like to see some behind the scenes stuff, there's Instagram. Uh, go to my Instagram account. I put on pictures of stuff that I'm working on. And then Twitch. Use that for official announcements and some retweets. Uh, and also when I'm trying to get some feedback from you guys. Um, I'll use Twitch to... Twitter. <laughs> not Twitch. Twitter. To be able to communicate with you all. And then Snapchat. Um, just for fun. That's really all that is. And then if you, li if, if you uh, like what I'm doing and you'd like to donate... I'm I'm grateful. I, I really am. Um, I I would love to turn this into something uh, someday. This channel uh, to build it up uh, to where I can do this full time. That would allow me to get uh, more content out there for you um, and be able to spend some time to actually get um, more. I don't want to say more quality content because that makes it sound. That makes it sound like what I'm doing is not very quality, but I think you, I think you know what I mean. Like uh, doing more production quality type of stuff. Like I'd like to try to get some more uh, game reviews out, and that takes oh, that takes time uh, to get all that together and to be able to do it right. Um, as well as doing more streaming over on Twitch, that all requires time, um, and if I have to work like a regular job. It takes away uh, from being able to, to 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 do all that as far as here on YouTube and, and Twitch. I mean, there's only 24 hours in a day. So, but yeah, if if you want to donate, um, all that money will go right back into the channel. Um, as far as uh, getting additional uh, software um, or making some upgrades uh, for the channel, uh, for the computer. Um, whatever whatever it may be, all that stuff will just go right back into the channel to build it up. Uh, and there's different tier levels set there. And you get some bonuses in return. So go check it out. See if it's something that interests you. Other than that, again, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I will see you on the next leg of our world journey. Have a killer awesome day.